Gentlemen, welcome back to the T. Shanley Starting a Business, Building a Brand Vlog. This one, big number. 239. And I would like to introduce you officially to my accountant, Keith Altabelli. Keith, meet the gentleman. Hello, gentlemen. All right, so Keith was coming by my office to talk a little bit about taxes today, and I thought, wait a second, hold up. I'm going to use him, the experience that he's got, um, and hopefully answer some, some business questions as it revolves around taxes. Because a lot of you guys are at, like, you'll ask like, hey, what's the best type of company to set up depending on what I'm doing? And I'm like, I'm not a lawyer, I'm not an accountant. And one of your best pieces, or one of the best pieces of advice I can give you is, is hire a good accountant. Because a good accountant is going to, in the long run, hopefully save you more money than he costs. And, um, and that has been my experience, you know. Now, it's not going to be like your, you know, your H&R Block type of person. Like, Keith, I guess that my, my first question is, how would you recommend somebody go and find, like, a good accountant? I guess it really depends on the business that you're in. The business that you're in, and also just ask your other associates, your friends. You were referred to me by a friend. Yeah. And I'd been doing work with him for a couple of years. He said, hey, go talk to Keith. Maybe he can help you. There's not a guarantee that gentlemen, the people you talk to right away, are going to help you. But, you know, ask around who's a good accountant, who's a, it doesn't have to necessarily be a CPA, could be an enrolled agent, some with tax experience is what you're looking for to help you on your taxes, who also can guide you on your financial side of your small business as you grow. I keep forgetting Josh. Gentlemen, T. Shanley on the YouTube channel just released an incredible video that is about water. The importance, five incredible health benefits from drinking water. Gentlemen, you do not want to miss that, that video. Keith, have you seen it yet? Not yet. We'll see when I get home. Okay. Gentlemen, that will be linked down below. Now back to your regularly scheduled T. Shanley program. So referral. So ask for a referral. Ask for a referral. Now, here's the thing. Not all accountants are good at, at all businesses. And, and so... Um, that is something that you and I have had to, we've had the, we've, it's been a learning experience. It sure has. Because I was, I mean, when I came to you first, it was, I don't know, was I just starting you, YouTube? You were just starting YouTube and you had your, uh, the Pete and Pedro. Okay, and so that was after, okay. Just, right. But we had to learn your business. I had to learn your business. How did you make money? How do you have your expenses? And you came to my office and you were telling us, and I looked at you with a big question mark, like, I don't know, how is this going to work? And then we started working, and it's like, okay, now let's see where we can go to monetize it. Not so much monetize, but tax-wise understand how everything's reported to the IRS and the state, state agencies. And we've had a very good relationship, little, you know, waves in the rock. I used, to get, I used to get really, like, this is something where... <laughs> So, <laughs> I get heat on this from people when I bitch about taxes. Like, I hate paying taxes. I understand, like, I, like, I understand they're needed and all that. But, but taxes, they, they kind of suck, right? Because you got money in your bank account and you're like, hey, this, this is my money. When the reality is, it ain't your money. Yeah. I've never said, ain't. That's not a good word. It isn't your mm -hmm. money. Right. And, um, and so you've just got to save. And that's, I think, one of the problems that a lot of people get into. They think, hey, I've got, I've got you know, $50,000 in my bank account. That's awesome. Well, the other part of that is, depending on your... On tax, your tax rate. Tax rate. Tax rate. That 50000 could drop down to 25000 More than likely, it'll be 40000 40, But again, the cash in the bank after you pay your taxes is really what you're looking for. And yes, we've gone through a lot of things as, as Aaron's business has grown, his taxes have grown. And the phone calls to me have gotten sometimes heated, but then at the end of the day, we're good. We have well, everything right. Yeah, it was, it was, it took me a while because, you know, when you start, you know, when you start down your entrepreneurial journey, right? When I started, I was like, yo, I, if I had to pay like $300 in taxes, it was like, damn, and I was pissed, right? Well, then as it grows, you know, it, it just, the, the, the suck, like, keeps escalating. And so, um, there was a point when I got, I would get really upset about, like, you know, having to, like. <laughs> <laughs> to, say to, to say that when I get the phone call as I'm driving, he starts yelling. I'm not proud of this. And, and I had to hang up. But, and I didn't take his call for about two or three days because I was just so upset. And, he, and what happened was I listened to a voicemail finally. He was apologizing because he felt really bad. And I understood, as he just said about the, the suck part of the making a lot of money, is paying the taxes. But once we got past that one year, I still, Aaron still gets on me about his tax bill. But at the end of the day, we're working together. And it's taken a while. But he, I understand his business. So when he goes into something else, I can tell him how to structure it and how we you know, fix it to pay the correct amount of taxes. No more, no less. The fair amount. 
Exactly. And, that. and um, the one tip you've, you've given me is the one mistake that people make that gets you in trouble with the IRS is underreporting your income. He said, and he's told me this from day one. He goes, whatever you do, do not lie about how much money you're making. Right. You know, we can we can work with with that, but if if you get audited as a business and it's like, where did this fifty thousand dollars that came in? Why didn't you report that? Then you're in big trouble. Exactly. And my when I started this twenty five years ago, my mentor, a CPA a guy, who's helping my family out. He says, Keith, when you get into the business, tell your clients never to lie about income, like Aaron just said, and you fight for every deduction that's ordinary and necessary and that you think is business related. It's a whole lot easier to fight on the deduction as long as all income is reported. And I personally work with a lot of landscapers and contractors that will have that cash income. And I tell them, tell me all your cash because that pile of your expenses over here I'm not sure about, I can fight for you. And that's when the first thing I told Aaron, I said, don't lie to me about your income. Report every dollar you get and I will fight for every expense that you have. And I think I've done that. You mentioned something right there in, in a minute ago about structure. And I think that's something that a lot of people find a lot of value for. Right. You know, when you're starting a business, right, you, you have the idea of, hey, I'm going to do whatever. It doesn't really matter what you're doing. If you're starting a business, what, what are the different structures and what are the pros and cons for each of the three? It's three, basically. There's three, there's three structures. Typically, you'll have a, what they say is a sole proprietor. It's an unincorporated, it's just your name. Uh, a lot of risk on the liability side, and you start, that's typically what most people start out with. You can talk to your lawyer about becoming a limited liability company. Hold on, L move your hands, you're, you're gonna shake the camera. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> um, He's you, Italian. <laughs> you can, sorry about that. If I'm, not, if I'm not moving my hands, I'm not teaching. Okay. Uh, but you can talk to a lawyer about uh, what they call a limited liability company, LLC. And for tax purposes, that, depending on your structure, if it's yourself or with a, a friend as a partner, determines how you get taxed. If you just go by yourself, your state says you can be a one-person LLC, you talk to your attorney, you fill out the paperwork, you'll be considered a sole proprietor for IRS purposes. You'll fill out a Schedule C. Then, depending on how you go, typically I tell my, my clients that are the Schedule C, go two or three years to make sure, number one, you start making a profit. Number two, you're paying your taxes, and then number three, this is going to be I can live off of. It's a side gig from a W-2 job, and you're, all of a sudden you're making three times your W-2 income. Hey, get rid of the W-2, go to my, my Schedule C. Then you make a decision to be taxed as a corporation. Two, re two areas in that. A C-Corp, think of like the Home Depot, Lowe's, and an S-Corp. In a C-Corp, since you own all the stock, typically, you'll be taxed twice. Business, the C-Corporation pays taxes, and any money you draw out as dividends, profit, is taxed to you. So that's not ideal. That's not ideal. In most cases, again, you have to look at your, your situation, whether you might take, decide you might want to take the company to a endeavor level. Um, the S corporation, which is what a lot of small business people do, mm -hmm. that's the simplest way. It allows you to be taxed only one time on your profits as ordinary income. You can take a W-2 payroll. And again, on that, I recommend you do that after a couple of years to see the profit and then you can take your distributions of the profit tax-free because you've already paid tax on it. Uh, there's a lot of good resources out there, but we have three choices, sole proprietor, S-corp, and a C-corp. Uh, if you have a partner, you'll be either a partnership or you can do a corporate route. Uh, and I feel like you start out, if I was starting a new business, like everybody I tell them, is to start as a sole proprietor because it does cost you money to incorporate. Yeah, but, but for me, sorry to interrupt, but That's for right. me, every business that I start is basically an LLC. Right, Aaron does LLCs for everything he does. Why do I do that? I think it's more for the liability reasons. See, Aaron has a lot of, li not he has a lot of liability. His ideas, people might buy some products and they want to say, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and sue him. And limited liability protects his purse, his house. I drive by his house once, or, once a couple times a week and I know where he lives. And he does not want to lose that beautiful house. And that's what would happen. I don't lose anything, but. <laughs> but but the idea is, so you go sole proprietor a year or two, and then you tr then you just go to the, uh, talk to a lawyer about being an LLC. But you can also just start as right. an LLC. You can. And you can. how much? I mean, it's not much more money. It's hundred the hundred dollars in Georgia. It's hundred dollars to start. Yeah. Twenty five dollars a year. Yeah. Okay. So that's the type of money we're talking about. So for me, it's more about peace of mind, and it's sort of like like the sole proprietorship. It's like ah, I don't want to mess with that because really you don't have any real benefit right. to being a pro sole proprietor. And as an LLC, I actually get some other tax benefits right. for that, but I also get the protection of 
you know, this is like my company versus me personally. Right. And, and so there is a, a, a layer of, of protection in that. Right. And you should always talk to your attorneys. Aaron has always said, I talked to my attorney and the attorney says, talk to Keith about the tax. So we're, we've got the business side, the legal side, then we determine what you're going to do for your tax. You know, some of his LLCs are sole proprietors, some are S-Corps, and some are partnerships. It just depends on who, he, who you partner with or what you want to do. Yeah. Um, talk a little bit about some of the things that I think as a, as a small business, you know, what are some things, some, some good ideas in terms of saving on taxes? Okay. In terms of, of, of you're making a profit. You know, at some point, hopefully, you're making a profit. You're, you're taking money out to live on, but there are some, some tax benefits right. to, for saving. And right. basically, explain so, that a little bit. So one of the things that as a, as a small business, and let's, let's just go with the S Corporation uh, LLC. You can set up retirement plans for yourself, a solo 401k, where you can actually add your wife, and in some cases, depending on who the uh, vendor is, your, your family members, children, and parents. So you're, you make a profit, you start making a profit enough to pay yourself to live on, then your profit doubles. Well, rather than giving 20% giving to the federal government and 5% to the state of Georgia, let's find a way to take that profit and put it away for down the road. So you set up a solo 401k plan. And that becomes a business deduction and also a payroll deduction. And so you're taking your $50,000 profit, small numbers, and say, okay, let's put $20,000 into a retirement account. Well, that'll be, that's saving $6,000 on federal taxes and probably $2,500 on state. So I've just saved $8,500 that went into my back pocket versus going to the federal and state government. Something else you can do, um, if you start making you know, good money, and uh, which I'm assuming you do, there's something called a defined benefits plan right. that I did not know about early on. You didn't know about early right. on, right? We kind yeah. of figured this out together. Yeah, so, so a little backdrop on the defined benefit plan. This was like the first year Aaron had a big tax bill. And like he says, can we do anything? I said, you know, I really don't know. We got the 401k. He, he checked. He talked to some people. He called me up. What about this? I had at the same time, I had called a friend of mine who was a financial advisor. I said, what can I do for this guy? He says, Defined benefit plan. About five minutes later, give or take, Aaron calls me. How about a defined benefit plan? Why didn't you tell me about that? I could have saved so much money. <laughs> and, uh, he's, he's bashed me, but think because I wasn't, I hadn't thought about that as a one-person operator that you could have one. So I made some calls, and we set up a defined benefit plan. What is that? Explain okay, that. it's a pension plan. It's your own company pension plan. Think of someone working for the state government, school teacher. It's a pension plan. It's funded with money from your company. And so you're making good profits. Let's say you've got a half million dollars of profit, $500,000 in profit. You can tell the benefit company, hey, I'd like to set aside $100,000 a year from a retirement. Well, they set you up and you send them a check for $100,000. It's invested in the stock market. And through actuarial work and financial services, by the time you get ready to retire, depending on what age you are, you'll be able to have a lump sum where you're getting a check every year for $40,000, $50,000 a year. Plus, you have deducted from your business income $100,000. So again, you're reducing taxable income, putting in your pocket versus the government's profit. And, and what happens is you go a couple years and you work with your, your, your company plan, and they say, okay, you fully funded it, and you don't have to fund it again. But we're going to continue, in certain cases, funding it for 10, 15 years, whatever your horizon for retirement is. Now, some of the younger... And it's more than like a Roth IRA. It's not, what, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a tax deduction on the business income, and it grows tax deferred in the investment account. So you have a company that handles all the paperwork, and you have an investment advisor. I happen to also be Aaron's, uh, one of his investment advisors, so I manage that fund for him. And he's got other advisors managing some of his other investments. And that's a good thing to have, too. Multiple people helping you out, build your wealth from the bottom up. And we're all on the same page. Because ultimately, when Aaron retires, he's going to have not to have to worry about a check coming in. Because you'll have checks coming from different sources. On top of that, I mentioned the solo 401k. You can do both, solo K and a defined pension plan. Because remember, if you're an S corporation owner, you're also an employee of the S corporation. So you're treated as an employee for some purposes and an owner for others. So that defined benefit plan is something that we learn together. And it's really benefited because it's a huge deduction that saves in... And you're saving for retirement. Right, right. And I think, I mean, for me, that was one of the hardest things to sort of get my brain around, you know, because I grew up, um, you know, without anybody really as 
as a model. Like my parents, they didn't have a savings account. They didn't have a pension plan. They didn't have, you know, a retirement or a 401k. They didn't have that. Um, nobody I really knew had that. My friends' families might have, but it was a very blue collar area. And so, you know, when you grow up in that environment without, you know, people to sort of teach you about money, you don't know to ask those questions and it's uncomfortable. And so for right. me, it was hard for me to actually do like a payroll and pay myself. I've always been so scared that like the faucet will just like turn off tomorrow that I really for a, for a while resisted having a payroll company be basically set up to, to give me a paycheck from one of my companies. Explain why it's a good idea to, once you start, you know, having some, some income to actually hire a payroll company to help and, and actually get a paycheck from your company. Yeah, so we did that again. We, as Aaron's business grew, you know, and we were looking at different things, I said, you got to pay yourself. You've got to pay yourself. So I'm like, no, 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 and, no, no, and, no. And he's like, well, do they have access to my bank account? Well, yeah, they're going to take the money out and put it in your other account. No big deal. So we, we got together, again, a referral of someone I knew that was in the payroll service, came and talked to Aaron and I about it. So you hire a payroll company, ADP, Paychecks. We happen to use Altera. It's a local company, local, and they've grown, and they're in Georgia. And they take care of Aaron's payroll. And every two weeks or once a month, he gets a paycheck. Taxes are paid for withholding, Social Security and Medicare, state and federal withholding, for part of his income. So he has his salary, and then the idea with that salary was when he wants to get loans, Aaron wanted to get a loan for his business, to buy a building, this building that he's in. You know, he gives the, the banker the tax return, what about you pay yourself? Well, here's my tax return. Well, we really need more income. Got to have a W-2. On Shark Tank, have you ever noticed they always ask, like, well, what do you pay yourself? Are you paying yourself? This is sort of that thing. It's like if you go to a bank, which, which I have done, it was really hard for me to get a bank loan to buy my office. This was like the first piece of real estate that I bought. And I went to a bunch of different banks and they were like, you know, what do you do for a living? Let me see your tax returns and how do you make money? And this was before, you know, people knew that if you're, you know, you, you could make, you know, revenue from, from uh, making videos. And so I got, I got turned down for a bunch of loans and it wasn't until I talked to another friend and a referral from Keith Hey, talk to this guy at a smaller community bank that right. he was going to, you know, he ended up helping me, you know, get the loan, the business loan for, for this. Uh, actually, I don't know that it was a business loan. Yeah, it was, it a, was business a business loan. loan. It was a, a business loan for this, to buy this building. And that banker is a, a, a friend of mine. Relationships. And, Relationships. And he would call me and he says, now explain to me again how Aaron <laughs> does his money. I said, well, I can just tell you, looking at the paperwork, he was, he's getting in. So this banker became a subscriber to one of Aaron's YouTube channels to find out what you did. Yeah. And so he also- Because this is a weird business. Yes. Like, it's a weird business. It is. And so then the banker calls me and says, you've got to convince Aaron to take a payroll check. It'll make our lives a whole lot easier whenever he needs to expand. So Aaron, just take $1,000 a month, $1,800 a month, just something small to start with. Yeah. And then as the business grew, and we said, you know, you're making a lot of money. We've got to make it look conceivable that you're running this bit organization. You can't take a $12,000 salary. So we determined an amount that worked for retirement purposes, worked for tax purposes on the new tax law, and worked for Aaron's personal budget as if he's an employee. And then everything else just worked. And having the payroll company, every week they send the checks, the payroll deposits to the IRS. Aaron doesn't have to worry about that. Uh, they filed the 941s, the quarterly payroll reports of federal and state and local governments. He doesn't have to worry about that because as a small business owner, you're worrying about everything. For the $100 a month or $85 a month he pays, peace of mind, nothing. The only, the only time you might get panicky is when they send a letter that says you're withholding requirements. Keith, what's this? Let me send it to the payroll company. They'll take care of it. That's all that he has to worry about. So find a local payroll company. There's some online. Uh, different companies do it online. Very inexpensive. And you start out paying yourself a little, and you can always change it. If Even you, if it's like $200 right. a month, just something. And, the other thing that I love about it, real quick, is yeah. uh, you know, I love that, that, that basically it's like they're taking taxes out. So it's like I'm getting, I'm getting a paycheck, but then they're also withholding the appropriate taxes for that money that I'm taking. And so you know, it, it makes, at the end of the year, you writing a big check, it makes it a little more manageable. Right. Now, depending on you know, what your salary is. Why are you laughing? I'm just thinking about what we're going to discuss later on today. <laughs> That's great. Um, you know, but, but it's something. It's, it's not money that you're having to write out. Um, 
Which, the other thing is when, he, when you do expand and go get a loan, you can say, I'm taking a salary of $50,000. Okay, and then your profit is $50,000. So the banker says, oh, you're making $100,000, and they can see that you made that. A lot of times people, again, on paper they say they made $100,000, but they haven't put that in their pocket. They don't have any proof of it. So with a paycheck, a W-2 paycheck, you're at least taking something to help you out. And a, length, a lot of times with lending, you've got to have that W-2 income. And you, if you don't have the money coming in, like you're waiting for a big check, you can skip one month and say zero this month and pick it up the next month. It's a, especially if it's just yourself and maybe one other person. It's very easy. Talk a little bit about some deductions. You know, one of the, uh, that's, I mean, that's one of the things, sure. you know, one of the problems, if you're, if you're a pro problem, if you're a, a, a YouTuber, a content creator, or somebody who makes money online, you know, with this world that we're, we're living in, if you figure out that mechanism, you can do pretty well. And one of the problems with that is it's different than what it used to be, right? If you were, you know, uh, you had a store, you had a physical location, you had rent, you had utilities, you had, you inventory. know, you had inventory, you had employees, you had all these sort of expenses. But online businesses, it's different. You don't right. really have those expenses. And so talk a little bit about, about how somebody could potentially, you know, well, think about things or save a little bit of money. The on different taxes. expenses, especially with the online service, I'm looking at Aaron's camera right here. It's a, it's a beautiful camera. That's a business expense. His purchase of that camera and everything associated with it, the data chips, the lenses that they change, the microphones, those become business deductions. Um, everything that's ordinary and necessary for running your business. Internet, of course, computers, of course, software, I believe Aaron uses like Dropbox, all these different online services, they're all business deductions. Online advertising, Facebook, Google, uh, on YouTube advertising, those are all justifiable deductible expenses. Uh, when you travel, always have your business card with you. When you're out getting a cup of coffee and you're in Starbucks and all, you can use that as a virtual office. Your travel from Starbucks to another place to do a shoot or something, that's a business deduction with auto miles. You've got to have a place to start. When I first met Aaron, he was meeting people at Starbucks. And I said, well, if you start at Starbucks, you come to my office, that trip from Starbucks to my office is a business deduction because it's a business meeting, that mileage counts. Keep track of your mileage. Always be thinking that whenever you have an opportunity to meet somebody, it's a potential business customer. So you can kind of be aggressive in your movements, whether you travel, uh, what, I, about, what about home offices? I think that's one of the things that gets people a little bit because yeah. they, they get real like aggressive with like, oh, I'm, I'm working from home and, and I'm going to write off all of my electricity. Yeah, so, I'm going to do talk that, about that's, that. That's not the case. Because so, I asked. Yeah, he asked. And <laughs> under, it's changed. They changed the new tax law. A couple years ago, they went to a standard rate for sole proprietors, business owners. So you're working from home. Uh, this office that we're in right now, what's well, 10 by 20, it's 200 square feet. If this was my home office, I could automatically write off $1,000 for the year without having to worry about how much was utilities from this percentage of the square footage. $5 a square foot up to $300 a square foot, uh, 300, 300 square feet for the house for the year. So it's $1,500 by working in your basement. So I have a home office. It's 10 by 15, 150 square feet, $750 deduction. I don't have to worry about the percentages of my I use utilities and all. However, my internet line, my cable line, high speed is because of my home office. So when you get cable, you can say that the expense of the cable, the high speed part of it, is all business related. A part of it, though, a part of not it. all of it. And that's one of the, the mistakes the, that a lot of people right. make. They think, oh, it's, it's, you know, they try to write off way too much. Right. So, so what I do with the cable is if someone says I pay $100 a month, I say, okay, you work from home, 75% of that $100 is business related. Because you wouldn't have a $100 cable bill internet bill unless you'd had a lot of electronics and you're trying to use the, the speed of the internet. So it's $75 a month. Same with uh, the cell phone. Everybody has got their cell phone. They try to tell me I use all for business. It's not. I know it's not because I don't use all mine. Again, about 75% is business related. Aaron doesn't have an office phone here. I call him on his cell. That's a business expense. So he writes off his part of his cell phone and he puts on his sheet to me every month when we get together. And it's, you know, and if, now if you have two cell phones, a personal and a business, and you can identify it, then you, ahead, can, write then you can write off the full, full amount. So you, you just have to think common sense. Uh, there's a saying in the, in the uh, tax and the accounting industry, pigs get fat, hogs get slaughtered. Don't be a hog because you get slaughtered by the IRS. Be a pig, get fat and happy. But don't get too overly aggressive.
because you don't want to draw attention. Um, you know, and again, I look at if it's, if you're, again, if you report all your income to me, I will fight when you say it's 81% on the cell phone usage versus Keith using 75. So again, it all comes back to reporting all your income and then will, your accountant will fight for every deduction for you. Um, I think some of the other expenses may, you know, uh, office supplies, of course, your toner, printer paper, your computer purchases, any, adapt, any things you adapt. But if you're a content creator and you're doing this for a living, if you, because I know that there are a lot of content creators okay. that, right. that, that watch this vlog, um, you know, what about other things? Like if you're, what about, you know, if you're, like, what are, because that, that's the problem. Like, what about, like, you know, clothing, clothing. Or, or uniform so, or things so the, like that? So, so if, you're, if you're strictly doing content and you, you want to wear a suit that's just for your video and your content every day, I would be aggressive and put that in that's only worn. And you'd have a stack. It's kind of like being an artist, an actor. You have your clothing. I used to have a couple of adult entertainers as clients. Keith. Yes, I did. <laughs> Anyone we know? No. <laughs> How do no. you know? <laughs> I, uh, where they worked, you, you, wouldn't be, you wouldn't be caught dead there. I know you're okay. part uh, of oh, 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 okay. dancers. Okay, dancers. Got, okay. It. got it. And, you know, they had their clothing that they wouldn't really wear it out in public, so to speak. So we write, out, write all that off. So if you've got some special clothing Sorry, and all, going. clothing that you, you know, suits and all, that you wear strictly for your vlogs, you set those aside, have them in your office, in a closet, you put them on, you get done, you take them off. And, I, and you can be aggressive, again, look at I have it. Two, I have two wardrobes. Like, right. I've, got, I've got like three closets here at my, at my office right. that I, I never wear those clothes when I'm at, you know, in, at public. Home, in public. It's it was strictly for, you know, my, my content creation. Um, and then I've got another like small, like I've got like nothing exercise, but like. Well, your exercise clothes, you're always trying, you're always having some exercise stuff. So that's stuff that you would not normally use, but you're also, when you're doing your exercise videos, which I've seen, you might have a, a, a shirt, you know, a neoprene shirt on that's just worn for that one video. Yeah. You know, one, sometimes you might buy something that's just for one vlog and you get rid of it, you donate it, write it off. Yeah. I think that's pretty good. Yeah. What do you think, guys? Are you ready? Are you confused? This was like, this was all over the place, but I think there's a lot of like, like good nuggets in there for, for the gentleman. Any other words of encouragement or not encouragement, but, but wisdom that you can, you can share with guys? I mean, I can't stress to you enough how important it is to have or to find a good accountant. You know, it's, it's one of those things where it, it makes your life easier. You know, trying to do it all yourself, you know, you could, but oftentimes and chances are you're going to miss some stuff. Um, and, and think of him as, as just somebody that's part of your team, right? Part of your, he's right. a team member right. because your, your, your goals and their goals are, are aligned. It's right. to, you know, figure things out to make sure that you're paying not too much more than, than you legally are required right. to, right. but what you want, what I try to tell all my business clients is pay your fair share. Now, some say that's too much, but then again, it depends on relative to what you're making. And if you find a good accountant that is part of your team, Aaron calls me, hey, can you check into this? And we check into it. If I see something, I'll let them know. They be, like he said, we become a team. Yes, we have our ups and downs. April 15th is a bad day for me to come by to see him, you know. But through the year, we're, we're meeting every, every couple months about going over stuff. And that's the key is find that person that you can meet with for an hour. We'll, we'll, we'll meet here for another 45 minutes to go over the first five months planning for the rest of the year. You don't have to meet every week, every month. It's just that you need to find someone who's going to be available. And also, when you find somebody, ask them what do they charge if you make a five-minute phone call to them. Because there's a lot of folks out there that want to charge you every 10 minutes. I just charge Aaron a monthly fee um, to do the, uh, the bookkeeping. And whenever he calls and asks me something, if it's something extra I do, I charge him for it. But I don't, if he calls him, hey, what about this? I don't send him a bill for $35. And you get a flat monthly fee from these. And then when you do your work, you can build a relationship. And again, ask for referrals. That's how I met Aaron. He, someone, he, he was referred to me by one of, a, we had a mutual a, friend. Mutual friend. Yep. Um, so, but just ask questions, ask how much you charge, ask, you know, get some references, and really say, do you know what I do? And learn, have, make sure the guy understands the business. It took us about six months to a year to understand how he, how he, how he you made the money in this industry. And then you can help your, yourself with that accountant can help you grow like Aaron did to financing buildings, 
retirement accounts, other businesses. So build your team. But again, the main thing, don't lie to your accountant about how much money you're making because they will fight for every deduction that you're going to have. And that, gentlemen, is where we are going to wrap things up. If you have a business question down below, start it with business question and ask it. Next week, I promise, I promise, T. Shanley update. I also promise to tell you and answer some of your incredible business questions. Guys, I've had the opportunity to have him here and talk to you, so I figured, hey, why not? A little more value than I normally bring. Last week, my wife, if you missed that, go back and watch it. She also shared some alpha wisdom. Guys, thanks for watching, and always, we love you more than our double monk strap shoes. Thanks, Keith. Now, Thank let's talk about my taxes. Oh, God, That's, please. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> See you guys. Thanks. Bye.